Welcome back to the Nerd Rotic channel. My name is Gary Beekler. I am live in San Francisco, California, and I come to you from nerdrotic.com. And tonight we are covering Better Call Saul season four, episode two, Breathe. And we're taking another shot at this show. I, I we covered uh episode one of season four last week uh for our nerd rotic premieres. Got a pretty decent response, and plus, I just love this show. And it's also a little unique, and uh, this might be a criticism from some, that I did not watch all of Breaking Bad. And I will repeat one more time, um, it's not because it was a bad show. It was a great show, and it was also it hit a little too close to home. I am a grateful recovering addict who uh, went around in a world very similar to uh, Walter White's, um, not, you know, not as hardcore, uh, but you know, trailers out in the desert, stuff like that, definitely lived that life and survived it. And I'm grateful I did. So it hit a little too close to home at the time. So I was like, eh, I'm not really into the show. Now, if I had a YouTube channel at the time, I probably would have covered it and stayed with it, but I didn't. So I, this is, uh, I'm kind of watching it in chronological order. As you say, I got into better call Saul when I got sick one time and uh downed it on netflix and it's fucking wonderful it's such a great show so um i you know if you want to come in here with uh breaking bad spoilers i know most of them anyway just you know through life and uh i look forward to catching the rest of the show so i watched season one i watched all, all of season one um so we start out with uh don hector salamanca uh post his heart attack he's in a hospital room it's a very dark hospital room and he's getting checked uh all over by i'm assuming some some doctor who works for him and i think they're checking to make sure that he uh, indeed had a, a, a real heart attack and it wasn't brought on by some enemy or you know he was poisoned or something like that um and he's at the Lovelace Hospital. Uh, we know he's probably not supposed to be there because the room is dark. And we see a couple of orderlies walk by and the two uh, guards who are outside, the two guys who are outside watching uh, Don Hector. Uh, you know, I think uh, one of them like gets his gun ready to see what, you know, something goes down. But of course, the orderlies walk by and everything's OK. Um, and uh, we later see uh, the I assume the doctor who was looking over him talking to Gustavo uh, out in the car and he talks about, you know, it looks like uh, there's no change. He's out of his coma at this point, but uh, it's, you know, there's really no change. He's not looking really good. Uh, and then he says, well, don't you think he deserves it for what he did? Uh, don't you think this is the right thing? And uh, Gustavo says the line that's been in the trailer all year, which is uh, I decide. I decide. Oh, sorry. Gosh, dang it. That's what happens in life. Live, uh, live, live streams, <laughs> whatever. Um, I decide what he deserves, uh, which, you know, that guy is so good at delivering those lines and playing that really creepy Gus. Uh, love it. Love it. So um, next scene, we see uh, Kim waking up uh, to some strange noise. And Jimmy is again, and I'm going to call him Jimmy here. Uh, Jimmy is, uh, you know, making fresh orange juice and uh, making some coffee and uh, making her breakfast and getting ready to go for job interviews and, you know, being a little bit manic about it. And, you know, she's we're, we're of course, he's still recovering or getting over Chuck's death. Um, and also what Howard laid on him at the last, at the end of last episode, uh, which was that he thinks it was a suicide brought on by Howard, you know, forcing him out of the company. Um, and we had a really, you know, strange scene at the end where Jimmy just kind of goes, well, that's your cross to bear. Mm, I'm hungry. You know, it's so, uh, we're seeing that now Jimmy, the, the sociopath has always been there. He's always been, you know, he was, he was slick Jimmy. He was, he's always been a criminal. Um, and it looks like he's, you know, and, and we see this a lot. Uh, I see this a lot in recovery with people who like really try to toe the line and be good, but sometimes it's either not in the cards for them or they don't try hard enough or circumstances just send them out to relapse or something like that. So that's, that's a danger for Jimmy right now. So Kimmy, Kimmy, Kim uh, is uh, definitely watching out for him. And, you know, uh, she, for one, she's awesome, by the way. Uh, guys would die to have a, a girlfriend or a wife or a partner like Kim. Uh, she, and she, oh, there's a great scene later that we'll get to. Um, so he's uh, not going to go to the meeting 
uh, with, with Howard, which we assume is the will. Um, we, uh, the next scene we see Nacho, uh, Nacho's dad coming into the garage and, uh, he sees, he sees his son, um, and, uh, Nacho tells his pop that like, it's over. You don't have to, you know, work for, uh, Hector anymore. I've taken care of it. And his pop doesn't say a word to him, uh, opens up the box, lays out all the money that he, that he had had to take for the bribe that Nacho had, you know, told him to take, uh, which, um, again, this kind of mirrors the payoff that Mike's son had taken, uh, cause he didn't take it willingly. He was like, you could tell he was really like, I don't want to take this bribe, which puts him in just as much danger as not taking it. Um, and Nacho recognized that. So that was a, it, that was an interesting, uh, uh, thing there. And, uh, so he doesn't say a word to Nacho, uh, doesn't even look at him and tells him, you know, take the money back. And Nacho's like, listen, nobody's going to take that money. It's yours. Uh, doesn't say a word and Nacho knows what's up. So he picks up the money, uh, and walks away and then pops finally speaks and he goes, uh, Miho, uh, when is it going to be, you know, and Nacho had told him that this is over and, uh, pops asks him like, when is this going to be over for you? Uh, and he, and Nacho's like, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. And that's what he's been working on this whole time is trying to get out of the cartel life, but it's not that easy. Uh, crime is bad. Drugs are bad. Okay. So yeah. Um, we see Jimmy pull up to his job interview and this is great with a uh, Neff copiers and uh, he's, you know, talking to the manager and they're chit chatting away, looking at pictures of the company uh, and Jimmy's able to name all the copiers. Uh, and there's one that's called the, the 6,500 color copier. He's like, Oh, that one's a great, that one's great. And he's all, yeah, that one was almost too good for us. Uh, the other guy said he, um, yeah, people can make uh, five dollar bills. Counterfeiters made five dollar bills out of this, and Jimmy's all, "Oh, really? That's, that's terrible! Oh my god!" You know. <laughs> so now we know, and and Jimmy, you know, says he used to work in the mailroom, so he knows a lot about copiers. But we eh, he probably knows a lot more uh, because of other stuff, obviously. And you know, we had the, the copy scene from uh, the other se uh, the last season. Was it last season with uh, with Chuck? Um, so. He, uh, they bring the manager in and he, you know, gives a basic job interview and they're like, okay, we'll call you in a week. He's all great. Um, then he walks out in the, in the hall kind of stops and you could see the Jimmy working in there. And, uh, um, they'd also brought up that he was a lawyer and, uh, like, why are you want to be a, a, a salesman now? You were a lawyer. And, uh, he's all, it's just, you know, and he, oh, he told us, uh, the joke about, you know, why God, you know, made snakes uh, before lawyers. He wanted to get the practice. And uh, that's the only lawyer joke I know because the rest of them are true stories, <laughs> you know, um, which is true. And, uh, you know, they say, fine, we'll call you in a week. He walks out, uh, comes back in and absolutely sells himself to, you know, says like, you know, you could wait another week for another guy. Uh, but why wait that week? You know, it's uh, like something like cost opportunity or something or opportunity as opposed to cost, you know, or you can have me right now. Now you might find another guy in a week, but that's a lot of wasted time. You could have me, uh, you know, and I love these copiers. And he gives us like really impassioned speech. And the guys are like, fuck, yeah, we'll hire you right now. And then, of course, Jimmy torpedoes the whole goddamn thing, which is awesome. Uh, he's like, what? you guys don't even know me. You know, I, I could piss in your coffee. I could I could be a serial killer. What the hell? Punks. You know, he calls them suckers and uh, walks out. And, and you know, it's it's hard to read between the lines. Did he feel sorry for him or did he hate them? for being such pushovers or was he just practicing? Uh, was he just, who knows? But while he was in that office, he was looking around uh, at all the little knickknacks and there was trophies from a bowling team and he sees a little Hummel figure in there and he notices that. And um, he thinks back to uh, the ladies he helped at the old folks home. Uh, and you know, you can tell he still feels pretty bad about that, uh, but it triggered something in his memory, but he did notice a little Hummel, which might come up later. Um, and then, uh, we also go back to, um, we get to see Mike and uh, Mike is, uh, you know, uh, his granddaughter is uh, on the swing and uh, he gets a phone call. He gets called in and, uh, it's, he has a meeting with Lydia and Lydia wants to know what the hell's up with, uh, what you did, what he did last episode was he stole an employee's, um, uh, from, uh, electro, what is it? Uh, Mar Mardigo Madrigal electromotive. 
and he stole a badge of one of the employees uh, because he's a security specialist and he uh, went through and you know checked all the cameras and shook everybody down and shook down the manager and that got Lydia's attention. She's like, uh, so you're not going to do that again, right? And, um, you know, Mike gives his logic on it. Like, listen, you're paying me uh, to be a security guy. So uh, I need to put, you know, you put a face to the paycheck. Now I have actually been to one of the warehouses. So if anybody asks me about this check, I can say I was there and it was legit. And uh, Lydia is all, no, this, this could actually it put you out there. Uh, it could expose us. I don't think it's a really good idea. So I'm going to ask you to reconsider. And and what would you say? And he's all, I'd ask you to do the same thing. Uh, so what are you going to do? And he's all, well, one down. There's seven warehouses, uh, one down, seven to go. So he's going to continue, which uh, Lydia is not happy about. So um, we get back to uh, Hector Salamanca's uh, hospital room and um so oh, previously, uh, uh, the doctor who was talking to Gustavo at the beginning talked about, you know, he's getting great care, but, you know, unless you're going to Johns Hopkins, like there's really nothing better to do. So out of the blue, a, um, a donation came in uh, through for uh, uh, to the hospital uh, through Johns Hopkins, and they sent uh, one of their best doctors out to kind of help with uh, uh, all the, you know, the harder patients they're having to deal with at Lovelace. Um, and it just happens. One of those happens to be Hector Salamanca. So this, uh, this doctor comes in and, uh, she pretty much breaks down that, you know, he's, you know, he's on the mend, uh, but he needs people to talk to him, you know, and uh, that's the most important thing. You know, we're going to, we're going to check him out. We're going to get him the best of care, but in the meantime, why don't you, uh, talk to him? And it's, uh, it's two of his, two of the nephews, um, and then Nacho and Arturo walk in later. And this is a really awkward scene where they have to like, talk to the patient this is usually where you have a family member going oh dad i still love you come on wake up you know remember that time when you know we walked a dog and all that so and now we have the we have the uh the drug lord version of this which is uh <laughs> the streets are safe uh don hector uh uh there was one gang that uh started some shit, but uh we took care of him we showed him some muscle uh you're looking good don hector everything's going uh, according to plan everything's smooth on the streets um and uh, Nacho's like staring at him, like, "Oh, I fucking hate you." Um, and he's all, "Nope, we're gonna we're gonna get you strong. You're gonna be just as strong as you were before." Uh, and you could just see, you know, Nacho's like grinding his jaw, and his wi uh, wheels are spinning. He does, you know, he's he's screwed. He's really screwed. He got so close. Um, but isn't that that this show? Like this show really loves to uh, to set stuff up and uh, not not really, it's, it doesn't subvert expectations at all. Like this is what you expect to happen in a Breaking Bad or a Better Call Saul. You expect like, oh, too many nice things are happening. Some shit's about to go down. And uh, by the way, if you're a new subscriber, if you're just in here, I am not ignoring you in the chat. I recap the episode real quick and then I get to you guys in the chat. So hang in there and I will read all of your questions. If you really wanna get my attention, make sure to hit uh, at Nerdrotic channel. And thank you for joining, by the way. So. Um, uh, yeah, so that donation came in and they're speaking the, to Hector and it was a really awkward scene. So, uh, we're back at, uh, Las Poyos Hermanos, um, and Gustavo is out front and he gets a phone call from Lydia and she talks about Mike. She's like, Liz, and, and by the way, she's in the area. So she wants to meet with him. He's like, uh, just consider this a secure line. And she tells him about Mike, like, this is, you know, this is not good. It's, you know, it's fucking with everything we're doing. Um. And I, I, I'm, am I just going to have this guy stealing my employees badges all the time and stuff? And, you know, Hector or uh, Gustavo doesn't think uh, much of this and he trusts Mike. Um, and, you know, Lydia even said that to Mike earlier is like, you have Gus's respect. I would hang on to that. That's really necessary. And it shows that he has Gus's respect right now. And she's like, and he, he just says to Lydia, he's all, well, then you better get him a badge. So that's it. <laughs> uh, uh, and, uh, you know, we get back to Kim and this is a great scene. <laughs> we got, uh, Howard and Rebecca who is played. Um, uh, she plays the, uh, I'm blanking on her name right now too. God damn it. Um, she's a Cusack <clears throat> and, uh, she's also the warden in Cla castle rock, excuse me. Uh, and they're talking about, uh, Chuck's will and, uh, Kim decides to go and represent Jimmy and what goes down is what she expects to go down. Uh, they were just finishing up the meeting uh, and Rebecca had 
wanting to rush it. And uh, she wasn't even with Chuck at the time, by the way. Uh, and uh, she pretty much got everything in the will. And Jimmy, the other thing Jimmy got was $5,000, which apparently is just enough to say, fuck you, you can't contest the will. Uh, and, uh, that made Kim pretty pissed, but that, that, that wasn't even the beginning. Uh, he was also offered to put, uh, to be put on a board for a scholarship and, uh, and, oh, and they also let him, they said, oh, we'll provide you a truck and you can go to the house and pick out anything sentimental from the burnt out house if you want. And Kim's like, Jimmy doesn't want it. And they're all, what? He's all, no, Jimmy, Jimmy does not want that. Uh, so they get Rebecca to leave. Uh, and it's very nice between Kim and Rebecca. And then Rebecca or Kim rounds on uh, Howard and's like, you know, basically screw you, dude. How could you do that to Jimmy? You know, uh, the last episode, he laid it out that uh, that he thinks Jimmy committed suicide. Did you tell that to Rebecca? I didn't think so. And then you give him 5,000 bucks and you put him on the board of of a trust that he that Chuck would have never given to Jimmy ever in his life. And then you all offer to let him go pick through uh the burnt out husk of a house of his brother who just committed suicide that you told him about asshole. Um, and you know, she, that, that was, it was brilliant. And we, like I said before, we all would love to have a partner like that in our lives who, who have our back. So it's going to be, it's, and that's the thing with prequels is they are tragedies. So we are all kind of waiting and cringing to see the point where Jimmy fucks this up and that's what we're going to assume happens hopefully she doesn't die because apparently kim wasn't mentioned in break in breaking bad so she's either left him and gone or dead um hopefully it's just left him and gone but either way it's not gonna end well for kim or jimmy uh so and 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 that's also the thing with prequels is the characters who weren't mentioned or weren't really directly in breaking bad are all vulnerable so, but you know that certain characters are going to make it, you know, we know, uh, of course that some characters are going to make, it. I don't want to spoil it for anybody out there who has not seen breaking bad. There might be a couple more of you out there, but, uh, uh, yeah. So Howard asked, how can I make this right? And she's like, there's nothing you can do. And, uh, she walks out. Um, and that was a badass scene. So we, um, Jimmy comes back, uh, from looking for a job and, you know, he tells Kim, I, I got a couple leads and I got offered one, but it just didn't feel right. Uh, but I might get a couple call callbacks and they talk about a couple movies uh, they're going to watch. It's either Jaws 3D or White Heat uh, and uh, White Heat wins out. And of course, Jimmy said Jaws 3 and Kim uh, had to uh, correct him and say, no, it's actually Jaws 3D, buddy. Uh, we all, all us old folk remember Jaws 3D and how terrible it really was. Um, uh and we see them, uh, uh, late, uh, so uh, Kim basically jumps Jimmy. They make out, do the thing. Uh, and we flash forward till afterwards, of course. And Jimmy is still awake. He wakes up, he calls Mike and he's all Mike. Uh, well, it, before he calls him, he's, uh, you see him on the internet and he's looking up the prices of Hummel figures and he finds the Hummel figure that he saw in the Neff copier office. And it's worth 8,700 bucks. And uh, we see the old Jimmy coming out. He calls Mike and says, Mike, I got a job. And our final scene is, uh, you know, what, what the buildup was. This was kind of a quiet episode um, until now. Uh, Nacho and Arturo uh, go to pick up uh, six keys of, uh, uh, of either Coke or, or, I don't know, crank, whatever, heroin. I don't know what's in there. Um, and uh, there's only five on the table. So, um, you are already seeing problems now that, uh, Don Hector is out of the picture. Uh, the kids will, you know, now that the parents are gone, the kids will play. Um, and they're like, no, we get six keys. And they're like, why don't you just take five and leave? And then, uh, Nacho's like, are we really going to do this? And he pulls the gun and, uh, the guy relents and, uh, puts out the six key. I was waiting for Nacho to plug them both right there, but he doesn't, they both uh, Arturo and Nacho walk out. And uh, Arturo's like, that's how you do it, man. They were pissing in their pants. Um, and then two guys, uh, or actually a bunch of guys come and swarm them. They put a plastic bag over Arturo's head with a zip tie, shut it, uh, put Nacho on his knees, have a gun back to his head. And there we see Gustavo. Um, and uh, Gustavo's such a good, bad guy. Uh, this is, I, I like the measured, cool ones. Those are always the best. Um, and uh, Nacho has to watch 
Arturo die right in front of him. And uh, as he's dying, you know, Gustavo lets him know that I saw what you did. I saw what, what you did with, he didn't say specifically the, with the pills with Don Hector, but he's like, I know what you did and you are mine. Um, and Nacho is in deeper now than he ever was before. And uh, yeah, he's, he is Gustavo's at this point. And then they cut back and they show the last breaths of Arturo go out and uh, that's such as the name of the episode breathe. Uh, and that's where it ended. And it was what an ending it was. Uh, it was, uh, hello, Slurmy Scott. How are you? <laughs> How's it going? Um, and now I will get to the chat. That was a damn good episode. Uh, still, uh, damn it. I'm still waiting for Netflix to upload episode here in Chile, maybe in an hour or two. Oh, I hope so. Uh, is that where you're watching it? Uh, Felipe Diaz. Ah, oh, wonderful. Chile. I want to go there someday. I really want to, I'm sorry. Hopefully I didn't spoil it to you. Slurmy Scott. I am here. Uh, I am here. Um, and, uh, now it's time to get to the chat. That was a great episode, by the way. Oh, did you lose me for a minute? Was the, uh, uh, I hope my, my stream was bad. I hope my stream here. I like, sorry, sorry. This is what happens with live streaming yokes folks, but uh, let me uh, check out my stream it says it's okay. Uh, maybe it was you. I don't know. Maybe it was me. Uh, hopefully you guys caught all that. Uh, if you didn't let me know, uh, <laughs> uh, yes. Don't you hate that Felipe? seems like Gus was the one who put the bag, uh, over his head. Uh, it says Dina McCombs. It did. It really did. Um, and that would be Gus like, right. To, you know, want to do it himself. Uh, I couldn't really tell. I have to go back and see. It was kind of shadowy. Uh, although I was watching it on a very, very big screen and a uh, hello, uh, Juan rock and Mary Ashmead and man of action. Uh, uh, this one better call Saul is a great air apparent show. It really is. It's uh, God, how many shows can be, an offshoot of another and be this good. Uh, it's, it's really rare. And uh, Vince Gilligan, uh, who, who writes it, uh, was really missed on X files the last couple of times. Uh, but obviously he was busy with better stuff. Uh, Mary Ashmead says, yep, it was Howard who was at fault. Uh, so Jimmy feels like, uh, a weight has been taken off. He did. And what I also didn't mention with the will is, uh, Chuck wrote a letter to Jimmy. And that was another thing Kim brought up to Howard that she said, you know, and, and on top of all this other stuff, you give a final fuck you to G uh, give Jimmy a final fuck you letter. Come on. Uh, yeah. So Howard is, is Howard. He's a lawyer and he's a dick. Um, I wonder if Jimmy's ever going to read that letter if, and when, um, we will see. Yeah, Gus is insane. Uh, which is my, uh, which is uh, why Mike wants to take care of his granddaughter and granddaughter-in-law. Yep. And uh, Mike, uh, you know, Mike, uh, we saw his motivation. Mike kind of ended as a human being after he uh, killed the two cops who killed his kid. And at that point, it's all about look, making sure that uh, the daughter-in-law and the granddaughter, well, his granddaughter, are taken care of and that's it that's it and he'll do whatever it has to do and he even talks about it to that uh oh, i forgot the the dumbass's name who had stolen all those drugs and he had initially worked for he's like listen you want to be a criminal be a criminal you know i've met good criminals and bad criminals i've met good cops and bad cops it doesn't matter at that point once you decide what you are uh <clears throat> Hope Howard and HHM aren't through with BCS or vice versa. No, I, I hope not. Uh, Mako says, love this episode. I absolutely do. Yeah, I hope we're, I, I don't think we're done with, with Howard, but that they, they really could have walked away. That really could have been an ending moment right there. Um, I'm sure they will cross paths again. But, uh, you know, Kim doesn't work there anymore. And she, you know, really stood up to her former boss. Uh, who isn't an evil guy. He's just completely narcissistic uh, and played very well, played very well. 
and freaking Lydia. Yes, I love Lydia. Um, uh, one thing that this show gets right, um, and if you think I'm uh, okay, so I'm very open about uh, my 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 drug past. Um, it's uh, it, it was many years ago, um, but I learned very early to just be upfront and honest about this stuff so it can never be a used against you and it's just good to be honest so my bosses know my whole family knows everybody knows uh and it's best to just have it out there um it happened it was, again it was a long time ago and if you're on the other side of things it's okay i mean it what happened wasn't okay and we always deal with that every day or i do but um that's why i'm so open about it by the way uh, so if people think I'm crazy, it's like, eh, you know, you can call my boss if you want. If you really hate me that much. And he'll say, I know, um, <laughs> love the names in the show, Hector Salamanca and Nacho Varga. <laughs> Easy to remember, right? Mako. Unlike those expanse names, <laughs> some of those ship names, man, it kill me. Uh, uh, yeah, I love that. This is a, a prequel and then I get to watch it kind of in chronological order i think that's a lot of fun you know we mostly cover genre here so it's always saving the world or the dark lord is coming or something like that and or there's a giant energy beam shooting in the space that the superheroes need to unplug or put out um it's nice uh it, the, the thing the things i like are you know spaceships wizards barbarians and a drug deal gone bad so uh and surrealism uh and uh, this falls into those categories so i like to see that in the dark corners of the world there's still tons of drama and action and weirdness and uh this show gets the feeling of of just the insanity of the criminal and and drug life uh it really captures the feeling of it with jimmy you know willing to risk everything for an $8,700 Hummel that he's going to steal and then split half the money. Um, you know, that, that's the, ins uh, that, that is the insanity. And, uh, you know, to, uh, to somebody who was, who was never lived that life, you, it would probably just seem like dumb TV show stuff, but that's the kind of, that's the kind of stuff that's real is people risking it all, risking their lives for $500 for a thousand dollars for you know, rob, robbing a liquor store. I never robbed a liquor store, but robbing a liquor store for like 200 bucks or a bottle of hooch or something like that. Um, and that's what the show captures. This the show captures just the insanity of it. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Ah, well, thanks Tarka Jedi. Yeah. There is a lot of people who do uh, hide it and it's for good reason. I mean, like a lot of people can't get jobs. Uh, because, uh, the stuff that's, that's in my past would, uh, would normally keep me from a lot of jobs, but because I've been so open and honest about it for so many years, I've, uh, and you know, I've got good resume that, uh, I've got people willing to speak for me if need be. It's not, it's not had to come up for so long now. It's, you know, it's not a thing. Um, I am very, I mention it in my job interviews. And uh, I've been told that's insane, but I've never not gotten a job from it. So, um, yeah, it's just good to be honest about that stuff. Uh, do, do, do. Honesty is the best policy. Yep. Uh, you know, on, but uh, what, how does the saying go? I always get it opposite, but I, I like this part. Of, uh, my old sponsor used to say this to me is honesty without love is cruelty. Now, I think it's the other way around, but I, I kind of like that. Uh, yeah, the, the show, it, it, it's, it's realism, but it's not, uh, it, it's realistic, but it's not grounded. Does that make sense? Um, it's still cinematic enough. It's stylish enough to really make it artistic and interesting. The, the camera shots on the show are just like little small things like, uh, last, last week's episode with the, when it, when it panned over. Uh, Saul and Kim sleeping in the bed or Saul, uh, Jimmy and Kim sleeping in the bed. And we had the embers of Chuck's fire floating over them and fading out. That was awesome. Uh, that's it's little stuff like that. Um, just the, the, the way they were shooting Hector Salamanca getting checked out for, it was, you know, like, yeah, it's truly artistic. I love that stuff. Um, I want to spoil it so bad with breaking bad, but I won't care. You can, I mean, I know who dies. Um, I know how it goes. Um, 
Yeah. I, it, uh, and I know there's been a lot of, a lot of scuttlebutt from the 10 year anniversary from Comic-Con, uh, that Brian Cranston wants to appear in Better Call Saul. Um, so the kid, I'm forgetting his name, the kid who plays Jesse. Uh, there, I think they're all going to appear at some point. I think what's really interesting is the Cinnabon adventures. Uh, where are they going to end? Um, do you think, like, eventually, uh, do you think they're going to wrap that up before the end of Better Call Saul or during, you know, during the show? So it's already been picked up for season five. I, this is easily going to go seven seasons. Uh, there's without a doubt. The, the, uh, just like uh, Breaking Bad, the ratings are very good. I don't think they're as good as Breaking Bad, but Breaking Bad's ratings like went up as it went on. Uh, and yeah, it was, uh, yeah, this, the, I mean, this show gets like 4 million people watching it on average, which is insane for a cable show. Um, Breaking Bad, I think, got like 10 at the end, which is Game of Thrones level. So uh, maybe it was even bigger at some point than Game of Thrones. Um, I've watched every episode of Breaking Bad at least a dozen times. I'm a Breaking Bad nut, says uh, Dina McCones. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, aha, there's uh, and there was a very funny when they mentioned Santiago's University. A lot of memes about it. <laughs> oh, Gary, when uh, 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 oh Gary, uh, why don't you spoil it? Breaking Bad is so easy to binge. I'm going to now. I'm going to now. It's it's just finding time, Mako. Uh, I've made a lot of promises so of shows I got to watch, but I'd say by the end of the year, I'll, I'll have watched it. Even maybe by the end of this season, I'll have watched it all. Um, I'm open and honest too. I tell people uh, get reference letters from sponsors, etc but I have cancer. Oh, I'm sorry. So I'm not working. Uh, I'm on disability. Ugh. Well, you'll beat it and you'll be working again soon. Mary, you're strong. Uh, you are strong. Um, yeah, it's happened to a lot of family members of mine. Uh, this show will go on as long as Vince wants to continue writing it. Uh, yep. And maybe beyond seven. Uh, you know, I, I, I saw a video on like why they, he was asked why he ended breaking bad and he just felt like artistically it was there. Um, and it's better to go out early than late, but honestly that uh, just what I hear that show could have gone, uh, uh, I, I, you know, it could have gone on. Uh, you can, you don't have to bite your tongue. I, I, I mean, bite your tongue for other people in the chat, but for me, I'm okay. Uh, I'm okay. Uh, but, uh, you know, and, and the, yeah. So with the whole Cinnabon thing with Jimmy, where is it going to end? You know, did he turn himself in? Like, do we know what happened? Um, I know that's the only thing in the current timeline. Uh, you know, what's going to happen to Kim? Who knows? Who knows? But it's not going to be good. Uh, it'll be entertaining, but it's not going to be good. So I'm going to wrap it up there. I had a lot of fun watching the show. Um, yeah, so the, the, uh, Howard gets what he deserves in breaking bad. Um, oh, <laughs> uh oh, that sounds bad. Um, uh, you know, I know, I know the fate of Mike, which is sad. Cause I freaking love Mike so much. Uh, he's my favorite character. So I'm sure he's a lot of other people's favorite character. Um, and you know, I do like, I do like Jimmy in, in his own way. Uh, and you know, I love how the show's not just about him. It's, it's a great cast of characters. So it'll be interesting to see when the breaking bad people come in. Cause, uh, it's getting closer and closer to this time. Right. So this is a period piece. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I'm going to wrap it up there. I want to thank everybody who was in the chat. Dina McCombs, Tarka Jedi, uh, Mako, uh, Mary Ashmead, Felipe Diaz. Welcome my friend. Um, Dark Jedi, I already said that once. And Slurmy Scott and uh, Joe Watson and Juan Rock. Thank you all uh, for joining me. I really appreciate it. If you're watching this as a video, please like, share, and subscribe in the future. If you like what you see, definitely subscribe. We have a Patreon, patreon.com slash nerdrotic. We have a lot of wonderful patrons over there. We do give uh, giveaway stuff and have content. You can go check it out. Uh, check out our Facebook group, uh, Nerdrotic Podcast group on Facebook. Uh, my co-host Dennis runs it, does a great job. There's also a page there if you'd like to like it. I know I'm telling you to do a lot of things, but the main thing is go to nerdrotic.com. Anything ever happens to this channel, that's the backup, and that's our main website, and that's where we plant all our audio and video from the podcast. We are also on iTunes. We're on player.fm. Uh, 
Uh, you can find us all kinds of places. And our next show will be Castle Rock, covering Castle Rock, uh, which will be tomorrow night, late uh, Pacific time, 10, 15 p.m. Uh, Man of Action. Oh, I miss Man of Action. Great discussion. Have a great one. You as well, sir. It's always good seeing Man of Action. And uh, uh, odd coincidence, Mary Ashmead, I was finally approved for SSI after six months. Bureaucratic bullshit. I hate bureaucratic bullshit. Six months. Sormi Scott. What the fuck? Uh, who are going over paperwork tomorrow. Um, yeah. I actually qualified for it as well for something I went through. And I, I didn't take it. But uh, I didn't have to wait six months. I like walked out qualified. Um, so that's, I'm sorry to hear that bureaucracy sucks, but I kind of went through that today with the DMV, but not as bad as SSI. I'm not comparing those. Sorry, sorry. Um, everybody have a great night and I'll see you soon. Oh, hell, I might even be doing another video tonight. So keep an eye out. Uh, may the small folks sing songs of your greatness. See you next week. Better call Saul fans.